Hey everyone, it's your soul and an interesting story which has been pretty much buried in the media following these surprising and unexpected shootings, quote unquote, in America. Uh, you know, people might have point people might have noticed that we were discussing very carefully Jeffrey Epstein's connection to numerous high profile politicians and celebrities in terms of child abuse and probably a lot more. We were also discussing many other things which were very important, uh, which suddenly stopped being discussed as soon as these shootings happened. But, you know, I'm sure I'm just a crazy conspiracy theorist to even suggest or contemplate that shootings might actually be able to be engineered by people behind the scenes for political purposes to distract people. Hey, that would be crazy talk. Um, so I won't say that, but let's just look at this story, which uh, I didn't know hear anything about. And every single person I've seen commenting on this on Facebook and other social networks also said they didn't hear anything about. And yet it's a massive story. Uh, and I'd suggest, you know, this is one of the things that got lost down the memory hole as a result of these shootings. So as you probably are aware, there's an ongoing attempt to extradite Julian Assange from Britain to America to face trial for various charges, uh, espionage and things which could result in him potentially being in jail for the rest of his life. Uh, so, you know, it's a big deal for anybody who's paying attention. Julian Assange obviously basically set up, I think, and, and runs or helped run WikiLeaks, uh, one of the main whistleblowing platforms on the internet. Probably the main one, actually. I can't think of any other. So, yeah, it's quite a big deal. And, you know, the whole story of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange is fairly complicated. There are, understandably, lots of different viewpoints about it. This story is about the fact that a judge in the US has just declared that the case, one of the cases anyway, against uh, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks regarding Trump and Russian collusion in the election uh, was nonsense. It's not based on any any facts at all. And basically it's been rejected. And there's extra things tied on to this regarding um, a political candidate who is apparently potentially involved trying to blow this into something that it's not and so on. So, yeah, haven't heard anyone talking about this full stop. So I just thought I'd mention it and go through a few links here. So this is ABC News in America. Federal judge dismisses DNC suit against Russia, Trump campaign and WikiLeaks. A federal judge in New York on Tuesday dismissed a lawsuit filed by the Democratic National Committee against the Russian government President Donald Trump's 2016 campaign on WikiLeaks that alleged a vast international conspiracy to tip the scales of the election. Judge John Colt, Colt, not sure how you pronounce that, wrote to, uh, that the Russian government was the primary wrongdoer in the alleged plot to hack into the DNC systems and steal a trove of emails and documents. The publication of the emails by the anti-secrecy organisation WikiLeaks was protected by the First Amendment, as was the praise and further dissemination of the emails by figures in the Trump campaign. Uh, Trump, who was a candidate, applauded WikiLeaks' disclosure, and then later pretended he'd never heard of them, like he usually does, um, was not named as a defendant. The Russian government, in turn, was protected from the civil suit by US foreign sovereignty law, the suit, which was filed in April 2018, named high-profile defendants like Trump's son, Trump Jr., and blah, 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 blah Jared Kushner. Um, DNC alleged an act of previously unimaginable treachery, the campaign of the presidential nominee of a major party in league with a hostile foreign power to bolster its own chance to win the presidency. Specifically, the DNC accused the defendants of violations of the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organisation Act. So... He basically said there's no substance to this claim at all. The judge labelled WikiLeaks as an international news organisation, which is important because uh, that's a point of importance when it comes to the publication of documents. Essentially, the Espionage Act has never been used, as I understand it, to prosecute journalists publishing documents, and they were trying to use it to, to prosecute Julian Assange, and part of that relies on them kind of saying that he's not a journalist. Because otherwise, if they say he's a journalist and they prosecute him for that, then it means that no news organisation anywhere can publish any documents that may have come from a hacked source, ultimately, which, you know, that would be a bit of a problem, wouldn't it? So, um, obviously not a problem if you're a career criminal in government, you'd like that. But for the average person who actually wants to get to the truth, it is kind of a problem if uh, news media places are prevented from pr publishing documents which maybe they don't even know the origin of or that they know came from a hacked source. So basically what he concluded was that uh, it's not illegal for 
WikiLeaks to have published the documents, provided that they didn't participate in the crime of taking the documents, which is fair enough. I mean, uh, and he's talking about the First Amendment protection and so on. So uh, it says here, going a step further, the judge called the DNC's arguments threadbare, adding at no point does the DNC allege any facts showing that Assange WikiLeaks participated in the theft of the DNC's information. Judge said that the DNC's argument that Assange and WikiLeaks conspired with the Russian Federation to steal and disseminate DNC's materials is entirely divorced from the facts. The judge further ruled that the court is not required to accept conclusory allegations asserted as facts. Well, yeah. The judge further dismantled the DNC's argument that WikiLeaks is guilt, guilty by association with Russia, calling the alleged connection between Assange and the Russian government irrelevant because a person is entitled to publish stolen documents that the publisher requested from a source so long as the publisher did not participate in the theft. So it's literally saying not only are you able to publish hacked documents, you're even able to ask someone to steal them um, and publish them, as long as you don't actually participate in stealing them. Uh, you know, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that they would have said that, but okay. Uh, calling this argument unpersuasive, the judge wrote that it would eviscerate constitutional protections. Such a rule would render any journalist who publishes an article based on stolen information a, a co-conspirator in, in, the th in the theft. So one of the interesting points about all of this is that it states in here that many of the points of evidence allegedly within this claim came from the New York Times, as opposed to an actual source of evidence that's not potentially politically biased and bought and paid for. Um, but one of the things that's very interesting I found in, in this piece is that it says uh, that the first of these articles was published just weeks after the New York Times hired James Bennett as its editorial page editor in March 2016. James Bennett's brother, Michael Bennett, is a presidential candidate, a senator from Colorado and former chair of the DNC's Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. In 2018, Bennett signed a letter to Vice President Mike Pence noting he was extremely concerned that Ecuador had not cancelled asylum for Assange, who was then trapped in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. It is imperative, the letter wrote, read, that you raise US concerns with the Ecuadorian president, Moreno, about Ecuador's continued support for Mr. Assange at a time when WikiLeaks continues its efforts to undermine democratic processes globally. In 2019 April, after the Trump administration announced charges against Assange, the New, New, the New York Times editorial board under James Bennett's direction wrote, the administration has begun well by charging Mr. Assange with an indisputable crime. Two weeks later, Michael Bennett announced his presidential run and has since enjoyed favourable coverage in the Times editorial page. Interestingly here, it says here that the, their father headed the CIA-linked United States Agency for International Development. Um, so, you know, without diving too deeply into this, I can't really substantiate the CIA involvement of all of this, obviously, but I do find it interesting that the CIA are being tied into so closely into this person, the newspaper involved, and it actually being, being used as a source of evidence for the case against Assange. Um, I mean, it's mind-blowing that this hasn't been picked up earlier, really, in a way. Probably it has been, I just haven't seen it. Um, so what do we really take away from all of this? Well, first of all, let's just have a quick look at Michael Bennett so that you know what this character looks like, so that you can identify him and make a future reference for that. He's the person who basically said that Assange is a criminal and, you know, is a threat to Americans and so on for exposing the crimes of the criminal uh, military in America, first of all, and government. So just, just bear in mind that face. Yeah, I've got a couple of pages here from The Guardian. Don't really respect The Guardian, don't respect many mainstream sources, but, you know, it's a, it's a piece that has some facts in it. Uh, just about his potential extradition and how... Uh, he actually received um, many, well, 18 count indictment here from the US Department of Justice. But as I understand it, a lot of this does rely on the concept of him not being a journalist. And basically, uh, as I understand it, not being a lawyer, it does look a bit like the um, the actual conclusion of this judge in America pretty much pulls apart the other charges, I'm guessing. I, I, don't, I don't actually know all of the charges against Assange, but... Certainly, it seems like a number of them are going to be have to be cancelled as, as a result of him basically pointing out the obvious, which is that he hasn't broken the law for publishing uh, hacked documents or wherever the source of these documents come from. So, yeah, just thought I would bring this up and um, got a few other things to talk about, actually, that are probably even more important than this. So I'm going to make another video on that shortly. 
Uh, but definitely would be interested in reading your comments on this. And as usual, if you like this story and this info, then do give us an upvote and re-steam, re-blog, share along. And yeah, until next time, peace.